Orbiting above us are thousands of satellites. Their journey to space starts in rockets of all shapes and sizes. But before satellites can be sent into space, they've undergone years of testing. This is the UK's newest centre to shake, rattle and expose them to the kinds of conditions they might face in launch and in space. If it's in low Earth orbit, it's difficult to fix. If it's beyond, it's impossible. And we're on a tour to find out about some of those tests in this giant testing centre, starting in this rather strange room. This is our electromagnetic facility in the NSTF. It's, it's giant. massive, it's massive. Yeah. So it's about um, behind the shielding and all the absorber. It's about 18 metres by 18 metres on the floor space. And yeah. I think it's about 15 metres high. It's a similar order of magnitude up there. And what does that allow you to do? Uh, so this allows us to test um, satellites, naturally, in the National Satellite Test Facility. So we'll do electromagnetic testing. So we'll do antenna testing, auto-compatibility testing, and electromagnetics testing. In effect, this is a room that you can completely block out yes. any signals or anything from outside. Any signals. So yeah, once we close the doors behind us, this room will be fully shielded. You won't get Wi-Fi, you won't get phone signal, no one can hear you scream, all of those things. The equipment in this room allows Dom and his team to test that communications with the satellite will work. This is like what we've got on the walls and the floor, if you give that feel. And it's, it's just full. Give it a squeeze, give it a squeeze. It's quite sturdy though. Yeah, so it's, um, it's, that's a bigger version of this, which is polymer foam impregnated in carbon and painted. How many of these are on the walls? I think at least 40,000. It looks like it. Or of that order, yeah. There's a good reason everything in this facility is super-sized. Satellites can be as big as a minibus and the team need to be able to hoist and roll them around to different areas for testing. Like this room, where they're exposing it to launch conditions. In this part of the research centre, they can point 48 of these speakers at the satellite to see what impact sound will have on it. So this is um, what we call a direct field acoustic noise testing. It is random noise. It's trying to generate a kind of a random noise field inside that. While they don't blast launch recordings at it, the noise played does recreate the sound frequencies that would occur during blast off. Solar panels could flex and break, um, but because a lot of it is, you can get very high frequencies, bolts will undo. Um, and Literally you, yes, unwind. Yes, absolutely, yeah, um, because it, we go, some of the tests go up to 10,000 hertz, so effectively 10,000 sort of movements in a second. This room was designed to be soundproof. We have a very big blue door. Um, it's effectively, a I believe it's a sort of like a stage door that you might find on a movie set, um, but it, along with very thick walls for internal and extremely thick for going outside, um, mean that we can run a test louder than an aircraft carrier deck. You can be just outside in our main hall and there'll be a, you'll hear a rumble. Everyone will know what we're doing. One of the biggest features of this new testing facility is the vacuum chamber. It's so big the building had to be constructed around it. This one is still being commissioned, but in a building next door they have a slightly smaller one in use and that means getting dressed up even more. Why are we so suited and booted for this task? Yeah, it is essentially to stop the fallout of the dirtiest things we have, which is humans. We drop a lot of skin and we sweat and all of that collects in the room and it will slowly evaporate and stay in the air and we're trying to keep it incredibly clean. This item isn't one that's going on a planetary lander, but we do have things coming in here that go to planets that require planetary protection levels of cleanliness, so we can't contaminate them with human items. So uh, this is our thermal vacuum chamber to get things really warm or really cold. 
Rachel is working on the aerial mission, which will see a satellite spend four years observing exoplanets, which are very far away beyond our solar system. They'll use an engineering test model in this room to see what impact temperature has. The first step is to warm it up. That's to bake off any things that are left in the paint or the glue, get all the outgassing done. And then we're going to go very, very cold to simulate space in a vacuum. So this chamber, chamber can go up to 100 degrees Celsius in hot. We generally only go to about 80, just for the safety of the items in it. And then it can go down to 90 Kelvin cold, so minus 180 degrees C, using liquid nitrogen. But for aerial, we need to go even colder because it's an infrared mission. So it needs to go down to 40 Kelvin. So we're actually going to install further cryo coolers and have a second stage of cooling inside this chamber. It's predicted that over the next decade, the number of satellites in space will increase by thousands. They have a role in everyday life, from major science discoveries to tasks like sending a message or warning us when life-threatening weather is on the way.